How's it going, people? How are you doing? I hope you're having a damn great day. Welcome back to another Throwback Thursday. This week, we'll be talking about the Rafa Benitez era at Liverpool, of course, 04 to 2010. In that time, finding some success in the Champions League, of course, that famed win in Istanbul. Steven Gerrard and the boys in the second half doing their thing. Um, but yes, we will be talking about how he looked to try and set out his Liverpool sides. Um, and most importantly, it would always be in a 4-2-3-1 shape. Every now and then they would change the shape into like a back three or something like that. I know in the Champions League final to deal with the likes of Pekar and all those fantastic players that they had in that side, he switched to a back three system. But more so, how they would start out games would be in a 4-2-3-1 shape. We'll also be discussing the, the pressing structure and style of play. They would look to try and revert into a 4-4-2 when they were under the caution looking to have that good counter-pressing type system in place. Um, so we will be discussing that as well. Of course, as always, if you guys don't mind, hit that like button. It would be absolutely appreciated. Loved all that good stuff. Hit the like button, subscribe, comment down below as well. Um, but most importantly, I hope you guys enjoy this video. And um, yeah, let's crack on with it. Okay, so taking a look at the formation, it is going to be a 4-2-3-1 wide. I've made no changes to it whatsoever, so therefore it would be one goalkeeper, two centre-backs, two full-backs, two DMs, of course, Mascarano and Alonso, one Cam, Steven Gerrard, of course, two wider midfielders, and then, of course, one striker. Now, moving on to the tactics. Now, the tactical vision that I've set is wing player. More so, not always looking to work the ball into those wider channels as much, but a lot of their good attacking outlet came from the likes of a Dirk Katz or, you know, a, a Ryan Barbel or, you know, a, a Risa. Obviously, they're, they're bombing on fullbacks, are below on the one side, and, you know, they had very good attacking outlets on either flank. But most importantly, the reason I've gone with wing play is it allows for that pragmatic style of play, whether you would want to switch up your defensive style, whether you would want to you know, switch up your attacking outlet. If you need players in behind, you can't switch that. And that was pretty much would describe how Rafa Benitez tried to set out his sides. Of course, having a very, you know, structured game plan to it, but allowing them to adapt in the game, allowing for uh, a lot of, you know, chaos to be created throughout the course of, of fixtures. Another key element to a successful Rafa Benitez side is balance. It's all about balance. So if you have, you know, a, a bombing on fullback, the other one on the opposite side needs to drop back and make sure that defensively wise, the team is obviously always very structured, very safe. Um, and that works throughout the, the entirety of, of the, of the uh, pitch, uh, whether it's the, the fullbacks bombing on, whether it's the um, DMs, of course, Xavi Alonso potentially getting forward every now and then looking to try and support. Of course, Mascarano would have to then tuck in and help support the defense as much as possible. So it's all about balance. When one goes, the other one needs to stay and vice versa. So yes, that is a running theme throughout the course of these tactics. And again, wing play for the tactical vision. As for the defense and the defensive style, I've set it to pressure on heavy touch. Now again, going back to the balanced lash style and how to you know, make sure that you're well protected, well you know, structured. It was all about the structure of play, making sure that the formation was very much intact. And yes, they would look to try and pressure every now and then, forcing mistakes, forcing errors out from the back and whatnot. And when those errors did occur, the likes of a, a you know, a, a Fernando Torres, a, obviously a Steven Gerrard and so on, they'd be able to capitalize, pounce on those mistakes and potentially turn them into goal scoring opportunities. So moving on to the team width, I've set it to 40. Now I do think you can get away with a, a team width being set to anywhere between 25 and 40. I kind of like the more man-to-man -man style of play, but also having that nice compact central area, which is essentially what they try to do. They always try to flood the opposition wingers or fullbacks into those wider channels, looking for them to try and supply and create from those wider angles of the field, um, making sure that it's very hard to play through the central areas. And of course, when their teams were cut open and the defense was, you know, shaky, it was because the, the central areas were not compact enough. Um, and that's also a running theme through countless Rafa Benitez teams and errors and the Valencia team, the, the Newcastle team, of course, the, the Liverpool side as well. So very much looking for compactness, tight, when, when out of position of the ball, looking to try and win it back um, as best as possible, making sure that the opposition didn't really have the, the time or the space in the central areas to work effectively. As for the depth, I have set it to 65, a, a higher mid block, you could say, looking to not be exploited with that space in behind them, of course. But at the same time, it does offer a nice attacking outlet, a nice high line looking for the centre backs. Of course, it could have been Jamie Carragher, Hippier, of course, Daniel Agger, 
and, and Skirtle at, at the later stages of it. Um, it allowed them to also get nice and high up the field, looking to try and control and somewhat compact the opposition in their own half. But like I say, a bit more of a controlled, balanced style of doing so, not overly throwing too many men forward or being too far up the field, looking to try and make sure that they could be exposed on the break. Moving on to the offense and the boulder play I have set is slow build up, looking to progress the ball through the final thirds, looking to build up from back to front very effectively. Of course, there were moments where they could look to turn on the jet and work much faster. And this is also why I have set the wing play approach to be on for them, because I think it allows you to be very pragmatic, whether you want to consistently build up from back to front or if you're looking to sit back a bit more, maybe counter. Of course, against the, the bigger sides at that time, they would look to have a bit more of a defensive awareness to their game, looking to, again, use the, 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 the power and the pace of Torres and the likes of Steven Gerrard up front to try and exploit their, their opposition with. But more so, the slow build up, the building up from back to front was their, their main approach and style of play. But again, you can always change it to the fast build up or potentially the long ball. They were very good at doing that, um, exploiting that space with those runs in behind from the likes of Fernando Torres. So again, you might want to consider that as an option, but I've gone with the slow build up for their base instructions, essentially. The chance creation, however, is set to balance, allowing them to have a possession-based brand of football, or maybe even having that direct passing, having your wingers flood forward, you know, trying to pierce the opposition's back line, breaking in behind, of course, the likes of Torres, like I'd mentioned, did so on, on the regular basis. And then, of course, if you want to try and overwhelm and overload and create, you know, high octane opportunities with the forward runs, you can also look to try and do that. But I think the balanced approach can incorporate all those various different factors as well, which is why I have selected it. As for the team width, it is set to 80, of course, like I said, um, not always looking to attack from those wider areas. Of course, the likes of Dirk Cat and, and Arbeloa were very effective with the overlapping runs, the cutting inside and all that good stuff, looking to try and create for the forwards and the midfielders in and around the attacking third. Um, so when they did go wide, they would obviously look to try and whip in crosses and supply cutbacks and try and pull the opposition out of their, you know, more natural spaces and areas of, of the of the defense. Um, so again, I've set it to 18. It allows for a bit more space between the lines for your Gerrards, your Torres's, potentially even your Xabi Alonso's making that forward run every now and then. Okay, so for the players in the box, I have set it to seven. Now, Rafa Benitez always expected to have three to four players in and around that attacking area, whether it was to have a cross supplied in or potentially a cutback, but it would always be the striker, the number 10 and the winger with the occasional late run from one of the DMs. Now, essentially that could have been either Mascarano or Alonso, but more so it was always Alonso. And again, it's another running theme that we have seen from Rafa Benitez over the years, whether it was at Valencia, you know, Liverpool, of course, Newcastle, every now and then there would be that late run from one of his deeper line playmakers or midfielders, and they would look to try and, you know, add that extra attacking elements to their players in and around the box. Um, as for the corners and the free kicks, as always, it is set to four. Okay, so taking a look at the instructions now, do, please do forgive me because, again, it's more of a broader Rafa Benitez, you know, set of tactics. It's not exactly from one season where they won the Champions League or where they competed for the, the league title in 2009. It's more or less a broader 04 to 010 type tactic. So if I am confusing teams and, you know, saying the likes of Carragher and, and Daniel Agger in the back line and, you know, Torres and Barros and all those players all in the same team, it's because it's a broader, you know, wider spectrum type approach to how I'm looking to replicate the Rafa Benitez roles and instructions and all that good stuff. So bear with me, okay? But anyways, taking a look at the instructions, starting off at the back, it could have been Dudek or potentially... Pepe Reina. So, uh, a very traditional base style of football. Of course, you don't require your goalkeeper to run out of his box and, you know, wander in no man's land. It was more of a stay on your line, make the saves, and claim the aerial balls when they are fired into the box, which is exactly what these instructions right here are set to. Saving outside the box, balanced, and of course, saving on crosses, come for crosses, being very aggressive, claiming those aerial balls, and especially if you are looking to compact centrally, force the opposition out wide, you expect your sense backs as well as your goalkeeper to be very good at claiming those aerial balls and crosses and all those good things when they are whipped into the box. As for your two sense backs, of course, it could have been Jamie Carragher and Hippier, or it could have been, you know, Daniel Agger and Martin Skirtle, of course. A uh, fun fact, you know, Martin Skirtle, I saw, I saw this a while ago, but Martin Skirtle, from what I remember, he was always a bald man. I saw, uh, I, I, I think it was on TikTok or it could have been on Twitter or one of them. 
The man has a whole head of hair. He purposely shaved his head whilst playing football. That is that is that is mind blowing. That is what that is. Anyway, point is though, for the centre backs, it doesn't matter which era, which team, which year. Always not overly looking to engage. So I think conservative interceptions best suits the the role of the centre back under the likes of Benitez. Always looking to make sure that the back line was intact. There was nothing really broken. There was no holes to expose your team. Um, and therefore, I think more so balance instructions with conservative interceptions. Moving on to your two fullbacks, of course, they would maraud forward every now and then. Of course, it was the likes of Aurelio as well as, you know, a, a, a Glenn Johnson or uh, potentially a, a, a an Arbeloa as well. Um, but yeah, it, it would obviously alternate and change every now and then. But for their attacking runs, again, a bit more of a pragmatic approach to it. The attacking runs is set to balance. Now, this does allow for when the one does get forward, the other one does tend to stay back, which is quite nice. Um, and essentially why I set it to balance, because not always would they, you know, consistently bomb forward and overly attack too much. Um, but when they did, it would always be with the overlapping run, looking to try and create a lot of space and pace down either flank. And then, of course, the defensive position is set to stick to position. As you'll see here for the likes of Arbeloa slash the right back, Again, balanced overlap and of course, stick to position. Okay, now moving on into your midfield. The double pivot of Alonso on the left-hand side and Mascarano on the right. So, for the likes of Endo slash Mascarano, he was more of the, the defensive bully of the side, looking to be that ball recovering midfielder, looking to consistently be in the way of anything good that the opposition were trying to create in those central areas. So, a bit more of a zonal approach to how he played. Cut passing lanes, of course, looking to get in the way of Virti virtually everything and anything, right? He was always the, the guy looking to break up there. The attacking support is set to stay back while attacking, of course, not looking to venture too far forward. And of course, the interceptions is set to aggressive. Having a, a very good bite to his game in the midfield. And like I say, if you want him to be the more physical ball, not ball playing, but ball dominance, ball winning uh, DM of the two, you want him to have aggressive interceptions. As for the likes of Positioning freedom, it is set to sticks position, and then of course the defensive position is set to cover the center. For the likes of Xabi Alonso, of course, well known for his ability to pick up the ball very deep, spray it forward, supply the forwards with those runs in behind with the potential, you know, killer 40 yard ball. Um, and more so, that's the role that we're trying to create for him, okay? So for the defensive support, it is set to balance, looking to just make sure that positionally wise, he was never caught out. So essentially, the balanced approach for the defensive behavior. Um, best suits him and his role going forward and backwards to be fair. The attacking support is set to balance as well, allowing him to, yes, get forward and help support every now and then and make those late runs into the box, or potentially looking to stay back, help out the likes of Mascarano with the boulder play as well, um, but also help him out on the defensive end. The interceptions is set to normal with the positioning freedom being set to being the deep line playmaker. Obviously, you wanted Alonso on the ball at a deeper rate, looking to control the, the, the pace of play, control the game, have the midfield ticking over, and more or less try and run the game from that deeper position. Of course, just like with the right-hand side, the left-hand side will also be set to cover the center. Okay, into the likes of Dominic Sabozlai slash Steven Gerrard. He is set to having a basic defensive support. So yes, also sometimes dropping a bit deeper, helping support the defense, or potentially, especially if Liverpool were, you know, very much on top and dominating the opposition, he would obviously look to stay a bit further forward um, and, and look to try and, you know, be a bit more of an offensive outlet. The support on crosses, of course, it was a high demand that Benitez, you know, wanted Steven Gerrard in and around the striker and the box. So getting to the box is going to be a massive necessity, as well as having him in that free roaming role, obviously looking to pop up in the little half spaces, you know, play off of the shoulder of the striker, yes, but, you know, potentially pull players out of position every now and then. As for the likes of the interceptions, of course, Gerrard and... Um, Fernando Torres or whoever the striker was at the time, they would obviously look to press the back line, make sure that the ball to play from back to front wasn't always there. Um, and it was always, you know, very hard to play out from the back. As for the likes of your two wider midfielders, now uh, Ryan Barbel, that's who I've more or less modeled the, the left-hand side off of and Dirk Katz, the, the, the right. So for both wingers, they'll both be told to come back on defense. It was a massive necessity making sure that the defense was the most secure part of the team. And then obviously, once that was secured and, you know, steady, you could then look to progress forward. So both wingers would obviously look to help back as much as possible. As for the, the chance creation for Barbel, he would obviously look to, you know, 
creates quite a bit from those wider areas. But every now and then you would see him come inside. So a nice balance with best suits how he played. And of course, he would use his pace to obviously Liverpool's advantage um, in those certain moments. But at the same time, also looking to come a bit shorter, link up with the midfield, maybe even pull players out of position. So that's why, again, a balanced support best suits his role. The interceptions is set to normal with the support on crosses being set to balance. Every now and then you would want and expect the, the wider midfielders to be able to break into the box, but also at the same time, in the same breath, also allow them to be more creative on the edge of the area. On to the right hand side, of course, Dirk Cat. He said to come back on defense, like I said, ha also having a balance with obviously for him it was it was quite a lot of patrolling up and down the right hand flank. I mean mainly using his pace to Liverpool's advantage consistently looking to break in behind but he would sometimes arc his runs into the more central areas looking to try and you know get into those goal scoring opportunities and goal scoring areas um so again a balance with best suits him as well as consistently looking to penetrate the opposition's back line as for the interceptions they're set to normal and then just like with the left hand side the right hand side is also set to a balanced approach for the crossing runs finally onto your striker of course fernando torres had blistering pace um, and to be fair, to be honest, Benitez used it to the absolute max. Um, the support runs is said to stay central. Now, I do know that Torres would obviously arc his runs in and out, you know, creating consistent chaos for the opposition's back kind of trying to monitor where he was. But I think sometimes with the more balanced approach, it does tend to, you know, cause quite a bit of, you know, arcing and not really that central attacking run. So that's why I've more or less put it and set it to stay central. Um, the attacking runs, of course, using Torres' pace was Liverpool's best, you know, counter-attacking weapon as well as one of their best weapons, you know, the ability for him to, you know, pull centre-backs out of position because they're always so worried about him and his pace and behind. Um, so you want to try and use that to your team's advantage if you do use these tactics. Of course, the interceptions is set to aggressive and then finally, the defensive support is set to stay forward, trying to use him on the break as best as possible. Now, progressing on to the 4-4-2 press. Of course, they would look to revert into this when out of possession of the ball, looking to set up their two banks of four, looking to try and, you know, compact defensively wise, but at the same time have a counter-attacking presence to their game. So, of course, looking to get runners in behind, looking to pressurize the opposition and maybe cause a few loose turnovers or a few mistakes and obviously looking to try and capitalize on those mistakes. So in order to set out this 4-4-2 formation, I have gone with a 4-4-2 holding. Um, again, no major changes to the formation or structural changes to it whatsoever. So therefore, it would be one goalkeeper, two centre backs, two full backs, two DMs, two central. No, nope, I like two wider midfielders, and then of course two strikers. So moving on to the tactics, running through this very quickly. The tactical vision is still set to wing play. Of course, that's never going to change when I do these types of systems. But the defense and the defensive style, and this is exactly why I've selected wing play, because it allows you to have that nice pragmatic approach and style of play. The defensive style is set to drop back, looking to, again, get their two banks of four in, make sure it's very hard to break down, pass through the lines, making sure that, you know, everybody's switched on and trying to help out on the defensive end. As for the team width, it's still set to 40, but the depth, however, is now decreased and also set to 40. It's still considered a mid block, but obviously it's considered a, a slightly lower mid block. Still looking to try and minimize the space in behind, not looking to be exploited, but potentially not, cons not or not dropping too far deep in case you do turn the ball over and it can lead to a counter-attacking opportunity. As for the builder play, it is set to balance, allowing for the slow build-up, the fast build-up, or potentially the long ball approach. And of course, like I said, Xabi Alonso on the ball at a deeper rate could definitely fire in those uh, long balls in behind the opposition's backline for your wingers, your strikers, your number 10s to potentially run onto and trying to exploit the space in behind. But again, if you do win the ball back, you don't want to have that long ball approach, you can look to build up very quickly from back to front. And I do think that the balanced builder play best can or can get the best out of all of these players in various different positions. As for the chance creation, it is set to direct passing. Now, this will encourage your forwards to break in behind, penetrate the opposition space that they do leave in behind them, and obviously looking to score your goals on the break. Onto the width, it is set to 80 still, uh, with the players in the box still being set to 7, and of course, the corners and the free kicks are still set to 4. Okay, so moving on to the instructions. Uh, the goalkeeper as well as the two centre backs are still set to their exact same instructions, of course. You want the goalkeeper set to come for crosses, as well as your two centre backs set to conservative interceptions, with the other instructions set to their base instructions. 
Um, as for your two wider, you know, defenders, your your left and your right back, um, a slight tweak and change to their style of play. Their, their attacking runs is set to stay back while attacking. Not overly concerned with, you know, getting forward, looking to try and compact at the back, making sure that they can't be exposed, and that's more or less what we're going for here. The run type as well is set to mix along into sometimes, um, you know, overlap or potentially invert into the midfield or create those underlapping runs for the potential wings if they did get forward, of course. Um, and then, of course, the defensive position is set to stick to position. As you'll see here for the left back, same role, same instructions, same everything. Okay, so into your midfield now, we've got your double pivot of, you know, of course, Alonso and Mascarano. Um, a few tweaks and changes to their instructions. Um, both will be set to a balanced defensive behavior. You don't want them, you know, having too much of a zonal approach, more or less trying to sit in front of the back line, keeping the shape, keeping the structure of that midfield too, and making it very hard to try and break down and get in behind. And of course, if they did, and if the opposition did get in behind, uh, you had the two center backs to try and deal with. Of course, the attacking support, you don't want them breaking too far forward. Um, it is said to stay back while attacking. Of course, most of the attacking out there came from essentially your four forwards um, and your two wider midfielders, as well as your two strikers or your striker and your number 10. Um, the interceptions as well is also set to normal. And then of course, with Alonso, this is the way the, the, the real major changes occur. Alonso will still be set to the deep line playmaker. You still want him to get on the ball at a deeper rate and spray those balls in behind, of course. And then finally cover the center. As you'll see here for the likes of Endo slash Mascarano, we do have him set to aggressive interceptions, looking to try and win the ball back still. Um, but otherwise, nothing has really changed. And of course, stick to position. You don't want him to be the deep line playmaker. You want him to naturally just patrol those central areas when in possession as, as well as when out of possession of the ball. Okay, so taking a look at your left and your right midfielder. Now, both of them have the same roles and instructions, of course, with this, you know, counter pressing system slash defensive units. They would obviously look to try and use their pace in behind as much as possible. So both of them are set to come back on defense and have a balance with, as well as breaking in behind. Getting behind is going to be absolutely essential if you are looking to potentially set up quite a few counter-attacking opportunities. As for the interceptions, it is set to aggressive. And of course, that does help with the counter-pressing system that you do have in place. And then finally, just like with the balanced instructions, both your left as well as your right midfielder will be set to having a balanced crossing run. So sometimes breaking into the box, especially if, you know, uh, one of your strikers is, is not in and around there, um, or potentially, you know, looking to try and stay on the edge of the area and whip in crosses or cut back opportunities for your two strikers. As you'll see here for the right midfielder, same role, same instructions, same everything. Okay, so onto your forward line, of course, you've got the likes of Gerard and Fernando Torres or, or Barros or whoever. So essentially for the Gerard role, uh, more of a number 10 in a more advanced position right here, right now. He is set to a balance with allowing him to drift in and out of those central channels, putting players out of position, allowing him just to have a slightly freer roaming type role. The attacking runs is set to mix, and now this is not essentially to have him back into the opposition or, or, or whatnot. It's more or less trying to use, and essentially what uh, Rafa Benitez did was he used Gerard's pace to the team's advantage, as well as having him play as a false line, having him drop a bit deeper, Still taking up that number 10 role when in this formation every now and then. So a mixed attack can best get the best out of a Steven Gerrard or even a Dominic Sabazlai. As for the interceptions, it is set to aggressive. And then finally, the defensive support is set to come back on defense, looking to try and, you know, add another layer and another protection, another body in between the lanes um, to try and support the defensive area. Onto the likes of Fernando Torres, also a balance width. Now this time, because you will be counter-attacking a bit more, you want your two strikers to try and run those channels. So if he needs to, he can look to try and drift wide very effectively into that, that left-hand side. But most importantly, still trying to use his pace in behind is going to be absolutely effective. Aggressive interceptions, and then of course, come back on defense as well. So there you have it, my people. That is how I would set out the likes of Rafa Benitez's Liverpool side, the 4-2-3-1 system. You guys can let me know down below what you would rank this out of 10. Whilst you're there, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, the bell notifications as well. That would be absolutely goddamn fantastic. We are trying to hit 5,000 subscribers. So if you do watch my content, and you're not subscribed, what the hell are you doing? Please subscribe, it would be absolutely fantastic and it would mean the world to this guy right here. Anyways, out of 10, I would give this a very solid eight. I think there, there are quite a few offensive flaws to the system, but it can be very good nonetheless. So if you like the system, you guys can let me know down below. And of course, until the next time, I hope you guys have a damn great day. I'm out.